This video explains the techniques needed to prepare trogoderma larva for identification. It is being produced by the Department of Agriculture and Food, Western Australia, with the Plant Biosecurity CRC. The capra beetle, Trogoderma granarium, is recognised as one of the world's most destructive pests of grain products and is subject to strict quarantine measures in many countries. Their reliable identification and separation from dozens of very similar looking domestic species is crucial to maintaining a country's area freedom. When a commodity is infested, the larvae are what is most commonly found. The adults usually only live for a few days, and their dead bodies act as a further larval food source. The identification of trogonoma larva is less reliable than adult identifications. This is due to the immature forms having less species specific features and is not helped by the many unknown species within the genus Trogoderma. Here, we will detail the steps needed to prepare Trogoderma larva for identification on microscope slides. To begin, fresh larva are killed by placing in near boiling water for a minute or two. This also acts to stabilise the DNA if it is to be extracted later. A pin is used to pierce the body in the neck region directly underneath the head capsule. This acts as an entry hole for the scissors. A pair of fine bladed scissors are then carefully inserted into the entry hole. They are then used to cut through the ventral surface between the thoracic legs and through the midline of the ventrites to the last abdominal segment. Alternatively, the larva can be placed into alcoholic hand washed gel on a microscope slide or other flat glass surface, ventral side up. The gel works well at keeping the specimen moist and reasonably steady. All these steps can be done under a simple stereo microscope. As shown previously, the specimen is then cut through the midline of the ventral surface to the last abdominal segment. The soft body wall of the larvae should cut through easily with sharp quality scissors. The specimen is then placed into a 10% potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide solution for 20 minutes at around 70 degrees centigrade, preferably using a dry block heater where the temperature is easily controlled. If some abdominal tissue remains after this time, use a micro tool with a curled end to help remove the remaining tissue and place back into a solution for a further few minutes. Once cleared, the specimens are removed from the KOH solution and soaked in water before being rinsed with acetic acid. They are then placed into absolute ethanol. Here, we are using a circular ended homemade micro tool to place a larva onto a microscope slide.
The larval skin is then carefully butterflied open with the legs fully visible. The head should be detached, mandibles detached and mounted dorsal side up. If the clearing process was successful, the epipharynx and antennae will be clearly visible. We do not recommend cutting the head capsule above the mandibles. The process is inherently risky when carried out by a diagnostician with limited experience. It is particularly risky to attempt when the diagnostician has only one specimen, which is often the case. Once the specimen is cleared and softened, the mandibles can be easily removed and the head capsule is soft enough to mount it on a plain flat slide. While used in this video, the use of a cavity slide is generally not needed as the extra depth is not required for any body parts other than cases of extremely sclerotized mandibles. Here we are using glycerol as a rapid mounting medium. Choosing the right mounting medium is important though. Once we invest a great deal of time and labour in dissecting and mounting the specimen, we should make sure that it will not deteriorate within a few years. Water miscible mounting agents such as Hoyer's or Stroyan's are not recommended for long term curation. We recommend Canada Balsam or Uperol for permanent mounting. The use of chloral phenol for clearing is not recommended due to its toxicity and because the phenol residue will discolour and gradually blacken the mounted specimen. The final slide mount should show a well cleared body with the tergites, legs and CT easily visible. The head capsule when positioned dorsally clearly shows the critical features for identification such as the antennae, epipharynx and sensory cup. With this specimen the mandibles have been left intact. When positioned correctly all the key features are still easily viewable and importantly the head capsule is undamaged.